Annemiek van Vleuten embarks on a two-hour-plus solo mission to destroy. This was stage seven of the Tour de France Femme Avec Swift, the big mountain stage finishing in Le Marchstein, 127 k's long, three category one climbs, including the uh, Petit Ballon, which is nine k's, about 8% descent, and straight into Plaza Varsel, which is something similar as well. Then there's a bit of respite of a descent, then a false flight downhill before the Grand Ballon climb, which is another, I think, 13 k's, 6.5% climb. Extremely difficult stage, Big gaps possible before coverage started. We saw that a big break tried to get up the road, minus Annemiek van Vleuten with Movistar. I think they only had Ode Bianic in it and riders like Balsamo van Dijk there. But then Movistar began, I think, pacing Petit Ballon and Annemiek van Vleuten launched early. First climb of the day and only Demi Vollering could follow her. And as you, if you might not have caught it before, uh, van Vleuten had uh, stomach issues earlier this week. And she wasn't her normal self. She was sick. In one of the stages, in fact, she had to go to the toilet like really late into the stage. But no one was really able to take advantage of it. You see, she's only 17 seconds behind Bollering on GC going into the stage. And Elisa Longa Borghini, she maybe made a mistake today. She rode on her own for like the best part of two hours. Voss would lose the jersey. She was dropped in the Gruppetto. And Demi Vollering was looking pretty good on the Platz of Varsal climb. 6Ks to go, 67Ks in the stage to go. She's in the wheel of Van Vleuten. She'd even sprinted at the top of Petit Ballon to take away some QOM points. So she must have been feeling all right at some point. Ludwig, Music, Persico, Zigart, Labou, Nuvia Doma and I think Royak as we're in group Nuvia Doma. So the third group on the road and they were always about a minute 30 behind Elisa Longa Borghini before eventually closing on her late. We'll see that battle for third later in the stage. FDJ well represented. But as we got closer to the top of the Platz of Arsel climb, Annemiek van Vleuten, who did, I think, 5.25 plus watts per kilo on all these climbs, she started to accelerate away from Demi Vollering with 1.1 k's to go and put a big gap. So whilst Vollering was able to hold her wheel well for a time, once she actually snaps that elastic dis-surge here, the gap opens up hugely and Vollering just has to start riding her own pace. And she's 2.53 ahead of Longa Borghini and 4.21 ahead of Nuvia Doma's group. So she'd actually, from this point onwards, almost do a solo TT herself and only lose a minute to the Nuvia Doma group. Mulman must have not been having a good day, the SD Works rider. I would have expected her to be here at this point, but... Then it just became the Annemiek van Vleuten show. You might have heard stories about her training. She does like crazy training kilometers. She spoke about that in the interview after the stage that she has. She built up over time really good sort of fatigue endurance and resistance and, and able to do those big training kilometers. And I think that paid dividends on a really, really hard stage like this. It was the descents maybe where Vollering had a little bit of an advantage and Longa Borghini. That's where she would actually lose time. The gap going a minute from her to Nivea Doma and Annemiek van Vleuten. The only thing that could beat her in the Olympics in Rio de Janeiro was descents, but here she was able to keep it upright, took it pretty easy. And in this valley, this group three or four on the road was able to eat into Longa Borghini's gap, Vollering just trying to hang on before the Grand Ballon climb. But even she would lose significant time to that chase group with Nivea Doma looking like the big engine in that group. Ludwig and Labou looked good as well, as well as Zigart, who had a really good day, but she'd already lost time on GC. And I wonder, before Grand Ballon, if Longa Borghini had waited up in the valley and let that group catch her, this group here who were working reasonably well together, Nuvi Doma and Ludwig, whether she wouldn't have lost so much time today to that group who eventually catch her. That's what I want to know, whether, like, Volring, no way she can sit up. She had, like, a three-minute gap. Of course she can make it. But with Music pacing for Ludwig, I'm not sure. It's a tough call to make to say wait for the group behind to chase you. But I think it might have cost Longa Borghini a chance at third on GC, which is looking pretty good for Kasia Nuvi Doma, who chased and paced back Longa Borghini and then was putting up putting even more time into Demi Follering with Lubu and Ludwig, the only ones that really on her level. But Annemiek van Vleuten, incredible performance. Solo for that long, head and shoulders above the rest, even with the sickness at the start of the week. That's what's crazy that she was able to recover this well. And here you see Nuvia Doma stepping away from Longa Borghini, Zigart and Persico with only Ludwig and Lubu able to follow her. And Longa Borghini, I think she'd lose like, over a minute now at this finish. Only her and Persico working together could limit the losses to Nivia Doma and co. on the plateau. But let me know in the comments down below what you think. 
does this justify SD work strategy to just go for a stage win in the earlier stages and not try and put time into Anamik Van Vleuten? Because she, Volering, lost like three and a half minutes to Anamik Van Vleuten on this stage anyway. Does that justify it? I'm not sure. You never know. You can't predict how Van Vleuten would have recovered. But yeah, over the top of Grand Ballon, she takes maximum points. Careful on the descent. Volering's able to stay ahead of the Nouvea Dome at Labou and Ludwig Chase group and yeah it wasn't there wasn't too much tactically really to analyze in this stage it was van vleuten superior van vleuten smash and she's too good taking the stage taking the yellow jersey no one should take that off her shoulders volering fighting valiantly in second finishing about 330 back with ludwig winning the sprint for third on the stage from the nuvia doma group labu fourth nuvia doma fifth and persico longa borghini another minute 40 back then zigart music and royak is rounding out the top 10 here's what van vleuten had to say after this extremely difficult stage. It was such a roller coaster after being sick. I was so so sick and then to win here like with this is it's unbelievable. And beautiful to finish here solo. Did you expect to shake up the GC like that today? Uh, for sure I had to try it because I was behind. Uh, I lost some some time, some seconds. Um, and my style is always attacking and also not waiting to the final. Um, so I did week on the stage and I saw that already that uh, the Le Petit Melon uh, was a hard one. And yeah, um, after six days uh, waiting and surviving and recovering, um, yeah, I thought was, uh, I, I wanted to make the biggest time gaps and that also means uh, going on the first climb and something is I'm a little bit older than the other girls so I can do a lot of training so this stage was really suited for me um, I want to make something clear it's not that my colleagues don't train should train as much as I do it also has something to do with training years and I have a lot of capacity and then it comes down to fitness and yeah that's something I'm really good in and this stage suited that really well uh, if my colleagues continue for some more years, they can also for sure do it. Uh, but yeah, this was one of my, uh, yeah, actually a stage for, that was so hard um, that I knew that if I would be fit enough after being sick, uh, it would be my day. But tomorrow we have the Super Planche de Belfi mountaintop finish. Not as hard a stage overall. It'll be interesting to see if the break goes. Does Van Vleuten want to win in yellow? I can't wait to see what happens there. And I'll see you with a recap of that one tomorrow. Ciao.